So we got a chance to talk to Antoine for the first time today and, and uh, since he had been here. I'm just wondering, you know, what have you seen out of him? And he, he talked a lot about how much you've been pushing him. Well, I think there's no doubt he's improving every day. Uh, there's still a ton of little things, and he'll, I think he'll tell you the same thing, that he's got to continue to get better on. And his biggest thing is just becoming more consistent. He has really, uh, I think, caught on to playing at the level we want him to and playing hard all the time and running to the ball. But there's still a lot of little technique things that he comes out of that he needs to continue to get better at. But uh, I'm happy where he is. You know, I'd like for him to get there a little quicker. I probably wouldn't ever tell him I'm happy where he is. But, you know, I think he's doing a good job. He talked about uh, just the, the the shock when he got here and the workouts he had to go through and things like that. He said he almost wished he was back on the park bench. Yeah. At that time. Uh, so what, what, just, what, what have you seen from well, him? Well, I think that the big thing when they got here, you know, he kept, I kept telling him because there was a period of time there that he didn't get to work out with the team because they had to get everything cleared up. So I kept telling him, you need to go run on your own. Because, oh, I'm, I'm in good shape. And he'd go out and run about 100 yards and quit. You know? <laughs> and the first time they put him in those decks, it was a whole new world. So <laughs> he met Pitt, and that was a different animal. But he, he caught on. And again, he knows what it takes. Uh, he's got good leadership from those, from Bo and those other guys. And I think he knows that there is a place for him. He fits in. He is playing. And, of course, any time you can play, that makes it better. So it's a, it's a good place for him. When you look at his background and kind of what he came through to get to this point, how, do you see a motivated guy, or how do you see him you know, the, kind of learning from what he's gone through? Well, you know, we, and we don't talk about the past, but I think uh, any time you've gone through things in your life, you know, it, if you're the right type of person, then you take that as a motivation and try to get better and push yourself harder so that you maybe never have to go back there or your family never has to go back there. What's the toughest thing about getting one of those JC guys that, and, and trying to teach them to play at this level and, I don't know, you know maybe a little freelancing or little, little things right. like that that make, you know, make a big difference? And that is the toughest thing It's the technique because a lot of times those kids make plays just off of their athletic ability. And then when you get to the level we're at right now, there's more to it than just that. That is a big part, but there's the same thing. I mean, you got to be able to play within the scheme and be your gap responsible. And you know, you go into a game like this week, especially, that's even more important. So it takes those guys a while to learn. There's a lot of times I wish, you know, they could, he could have even redshirted him and Rondell both because it is taking them a while to catch on. You brought him here with the idea that he would play right away, but if you had to ask a little more of him than you would have liked just because the injuries you had inside to start the season? Exactly. You know, with, with what happened there, he is playing more and it has a bigger role than I even thought he would. And when we brought him here, we really was thinking of him as a three technique. But then, you know, we ended up when, after uh, JT got hurt right off the bat, I ended up taking the nose guard. And then, of course, Tyler got hurt. And so, then I keep thinking, well, do I need to move him to three technique? But uh, I think we're in a good position where we're at right now, so we'll keep it like we are. And those guys have to be interchangeable anyway, so I think they're doing a good job. How did you guys find him? It was, uh, I don't know, like I think I told somebody before when we were at the bowl game, somebody sent me his name to look at, and we started looking at him. At first, we didn't think he was going to make it academically, and then we kept just doing some research and uh, found out that he had a chance. and his background that he was pushing himself hard. So we got with him and thought he would be one of those kids that we'd take a chance on. And if he got eligible, then we could end up with a good player before it's all over. And I think we will. You, you actually went down and, and visited him, is that right? I did and went and visited with him and his uncles. And uh, you know, like I said, got to know him a little bit and felt like that he was a type of kid that would push through the tough times because he had been through in some, some tough times and that he was doing what he had to academically, and he would be worth taking a chance on. What, is, what, what do you think of his, his personality? I mean, in, in general, he, he seems to always have kind of a smile. He does most of the time. <laughs> he still has some of those days where he gets there, and I tell him, you better get that smile back. I don't, I'm not putting up with it, but he does have a good personality. Um, going against Air Force as a defensive line, what's the biggest challenge for you guys? Discipline. And I think we've been doing a good job. I think we did a great job last week. Our linebackers are fitting stuff out perfectly, and our DBs are fitting where they're supposed to. And 
obviously that'll be what it'll take this week, even on a higher uh, level than it was last week, because it's going to take all 11 of us, you know, to carry it out from the dive to the quarterback to the pitch. So it's uh, it's a disciplined football game. Everybody talks about the cut blocking. How how uncomfortable is that for the defensive lineman? Uh, they just have to play it. I mean, <laughs> Hey, can't, well, big deal. So you got to play <laughs> off of it and go play. Is the biggest thing with that like a, the mental approach or the physical approach? I mean, I know that you, obviously cut block, you might try to slow them down a little bit. But right. I mean, some of it is, is physical, but a lot of it is mental. I mean, when you look at the game itself, you know, the, the ball's going lateral a lot of times with those guys. So it's, you know, if you're right at the point of attack where the fullback is, that's a physical part. And really the mental and the athletic part takes over on the edges. Coach was saying they run a triple option, but they do a lot of other stuff too with pistol and stuff. How, how much other kind of stuff are they doing with power and pistol and that kind of stuff? Well, a lot of it, and, and that's what's uh, I think different than them than most of those teams that you play that run the triple option. That's what you got to stop with, with these guys. They got a, a little bit of everything, so you got to be able to stop what we did a lot, have been stopping really the whole year, and then plus the triple option. So you spend maybe three quarters of practice working on the triple option and. The other quarter working on, uh, you know, the rest of their offense. I know you guys have done some, you know, periods all along the way to kind of get ready for this. But how hard is it in practice to simulate? Speed well, I don't think you do. can really, yeah, and that's the thing I've seen over the years, regardless of who it is. When you're playing one of the teams that run this offense, you just you can't. And I think that's the reason it, it takes you a quarter, mm -hmm. you know, to even get adjusted to the speed they run it at. What kind of history do you have uh, playing at service academies? I've never played at one. Really? I'm looking forward to going there, yeah. We played uh, Air Force at Tennessee when I was there once, okay. but I've never been to one of the academies. Uh, I got one more. I'm probably not going to see a ton of it this week, but I'm just going to ask you to talk with Gabe today. We talked about him sliding inside. How effective was he against against Louisiana Lafayette and you know getting the quarterback to move constantly? Yeah, I think you go back to the week we did it first right. against uh, – Connecticut, yeah, obviously it was a big package for us. And then last week we knew we were going to have trouble getting there because the quarterback was going to get rid of it fast. But I think they've been really effective when you look at what we got out, how many times he threw the ball out of bounds last week. You know, he wasn't going to take a sack. So, but as long as we got him throwing out of bounds, that don't count much. Yeah, you know, you, you put a quarter, mobile quarterback on the, on the move. What, I, I, why is that effective, I guess? Well, it's just hard for him to get, you know, to get set to throw the ball. And you get him, and if you'll look, he wasn't out of the pocket a lot on us last week. I thought the guys did a real good job. That was one of the emphasis we went in on, squeezing the pocket and trying to make him uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. And so he couldn't get out as much as he wanted to, so he had to just throw the ball out of bounds. And then with those guys standing up on the interior, Harkins really just kind of took that upon themselves. Is that something you've been telling we, them? To yeah, we've forward? been working on that. I mean, I've done that over the years with some of those guys. In that package, there are actually you know, four defensive ends in the game. And so you got great speed, and some of them feel more comfortable, especially inside, you know, going from standing up, and we can move them around and prowl them around, and you don't ever know where they're coming from. So it's fun for them, and when it works, it's fun for me. <laughs>